Hey, hello guys, Amitrust here, just coming at you with another quick video. Uh, this video is actually going to be demonstrating uh, integrating Wax Express Trade into any sort of uh, website, so whether it's a trading website or you want some sort of withdrawals or deposits, I'm going to be showing you how to do that today. So, basically, what I thought uh, whenever I saw this, so Opie Skins came out with another uh, competition, so we can win three grand out of this one. Uh, so, basically, they had. Uh, they had said you have to show a step-by-step -step on how to integrate Wax IO Express Trade into a website. So I thought that was way, way too basic. So I've just gone ahead and I've made an example website here. Uh, the code for this is available on GitHub, uh, as you can see here. So I've released uh, the whole code uh, on GitHub. So you're free to go and download this. You're free to use this commercially or not. Anything that you like. You can go ahead and use this code so basically i'm going to split this into two different parts the first part is going to be explaining how to integrate the, the express trade api into your website and then the second part is going to be for non-developers and showing you how to take my code uh here and uh to actually do something with it and get a website up and running so that'll be a full step-by-step -step tutorial so if all you're looking for is just a tutorial on how to make this website uh, what to do with this code then you can go to the next video and I'll put the link for that down in the description if you're here to see how to integrate Wax Express Trade into a website then stay tuned okay then guys so if you're gonna follow along with me in this tutorial then you're gonna want to come to the github page which I'll leave in the description you're gonna want to download the zip you're gonna want to extract the zip and then you'll be able to follow along in the code and I'll see you whenever I'm in the code Okay then guys, so before we actually get into the code and start looking at the functions that we're going to be using, we're actually just going to take a quick look at the Express Trade documentation. So Express Trade, it's just literally called Express Trade on NPM. This is the module that I've selected that we're going to be using because it is very, very simple and it's there to use. So um, yeah, if you're looking to do this outside of Node and you don't have a package available, uh, there's OP Skins documentation, which I'll also link down in the description, uh, and you can select any of the interfaces here. So for example, Trade, and then if we were gonna go for Send Offer to Steam ID, then you would just make a post request then on whatever language that you're using. Include these details in the body, and essentially it's the same thing. So in this, there, you see, that's the thing. There's not really much to explain about this, which is why I was kind of disappointed with this. And that's why I took it too far by making a website and making it open source. But, you know, I kind of want to put a little bit of effort into this tutorial. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, I'll show you how to use the module, even though it is very, very simple to use. I'll just explain what I can about it. So, as you can see, we just specify ET here. We can select any interface. And we can select any uh, endpoint that we want from that interface. So, for example... If we were going to do a send offer to Steam ID, all that we need to do with this module is to pass in an object of the things that we want. So, for example, send offer to Steam ID. We have two factor code, Steam ID, items, and message. So, inside of the inside of here, then if we were going to want to send offer, so we don't need the two factor code because the module does that for us. But we have Steam ID, items, and message. So then inside of here, we just pass Steam ID, items, and then we can have a message parameter inside of this object. So I'll show you how this works inside the code then. But the thing about this is, the thing about this module is, uh, we can listen out for events very, very easily with this module. So we don't need to set up any sort of like interval in our code or anything like that. The module does it all for us. So inside of here then, we can set, we can set a poll interval to check, uh, to specify when we check for offers. And we can get all these different events. So like offer, offer accepted is a very good one because then we can check when our sent offer was accepted. Uh, so then we can, you know, log out some information, which I'll show you that I've done in the code here. And you know, any sort of things like this. Uh, obviously in this website, a lot of this stuff is not going to be used, but hopefully from watching this video, then you'll get enough of a base that you can go ahead and use a lot of this stuff uh, then for yourself. So without saying any more, we'll just get right into the code. Okay then guys, so we're in the code now, and as you can see, there is this is the website that I set up. This is the, uh, it's actually at trade.gain.gg if you want to see an example of what the site looks like. And uh, yeah, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to require this Express Trade module, as I said before. And as I was saying there, we're not going to get into anything other than the Express Trade related things because you're probably going to know how to set up a site already if you're watching this. And uh, if not, you can go and watch the other video. But yeah, I'm not going to get into this other sort of thing, anything else too much apart from the express trade itself. So basically to set up this express trade uh, module, we're basically going to create a constant variable called ET. 
which is just standard for the package. And there's going to be new express trade, which we required up here. Um, we pass in three different um, we pass in three different parameters into this object here. So we pass in our API key, which is going to be our OP Skins API key. We pass in a, uh, a two-factor secret, uh, which is going to be the two-factor secret. And the pull interval is going to be the time in milliseconds that we scan for uh, new offers. So for example, I think five seconds is fine. They won't, uh, they won't block your requests or anything like that uh, with a five second. So that should be okay. So I'll just show you how to get these two values here so that you can insert them in. For the OP Skins API key, what you're going to want to do first, uh, come to OP Skins, go to Account, then you're going to click on Advanced Options here. Uh, you'll see API key here. If you don't have two-factor authentication enabled, you're going to have to enable that first. However, I recommend that you do it through the Authenticator app. This is a lot better because um, you can just copy and paste then across. You can just copy this, paste it across then, and uh, yeah, you're going to be able to do it a lot easier then. So you're just going to click on show key after you enable this. You're going to have to agree to the API terms of service. You click show key. Uh, you enter your two-factor authentication code uh, in here. And then the API key will be displayed. I'm not going to show mine just for this video. Then for getting the two-factor secret then, this is why I recommend that you set two-factor authentication up using this app. So basically, after you download this app, it's called Authy, I think it is. Uh, no, actually, it's just called Authenticator. It's called Authenticator on the Google Chrome Store. Um, this is the one that I recommend. So after you've imported your account and you have it in here, you're going to go to the settings up here. You're going to go to export slash import and you're going to click on download backup file. So once you have this authenticator.json file downloaded, you're going to click on it and I'll show you an example here now. Okay then, so if you open up the authenticator.json file, you're going to see a file that looks like this. If you have multiple accounts then, they will be listed inside of here then down and down more so what you're going to want to do then is you're going to find the account uh, that you associated with this so for example almatras account for op skins which is the one that i'm on at the minute so we have account almatras in here and then as you can see then we have these different details all that you need to worry about is the secret value so the secret value is what you're going to want to insert in inside of here you're going to put the secret in here now i recommend having a config file then to save all this stuff separately so that you can easily do it so that's what you see in here uh, but yeah you're just going to fill in your secret here which you should get out of this and you're going to fill in your api key okay then so now that you've got express trade module all set up then you're going to well i'm actually just going to show off a few different functions that i use from the module uh, within this website that i made so this is basically the send offer to steam id endpoint that i'm going to be showing off here so as i said this module is just extremely simple to use you just go et dot interface which is going to be i trade and the endpoint is going to be send offer to steam id and then the first parameter in here you just pass in an object of all the different things that you want so the steam id is going to be the steam id you want to send to in my case, then, this is going to be the user that's currently logged in. Inside of items, this is going to be a comma-separated list of item IDs that you want to send in the offer. So, for example, then, if I go up here, then, uh, I do get the inventory. Sorry, no, no, this is my function. I'm going to get in the inventory, uh, obviously, because I use the Express Trade module for that. But essentially, all that you need to know is this is a comma-separated list of of item IDs in here. Then we can set a message and then we simply just send the offer then and this is the callback function if there's an error. And don't forget we need to check if the body.status is equal to one. And if it's equal to one, that means that the trade was successfully sent. Now, inside of here, the body is going to be a trade offer object, which I'm gonna show you an example of here now. Okay then guys, so we can get a, a, an example of a standard trade offer object in here then after we send the trade. So this is basically the body then uh, that we get returned from this function call. So we have ID, we have sender, and then inside of sender we have a whole lot of different things. The main thing that you're probably going to be using is items. So inside of here then we have a standard item, uh, I'm sorry, an array of standard item objects then. And as you can see in here, we have a lot of different information about the object itself. So we have the ID, which is going to be used then to pass in, where was it? Sorry. Uh, it's going to be used uh, to be passed in here uh, in a string, a comma separated list. 
and uh, yeah we have a whole lot of different stuff in here uh, you this is probably just more for you to take a good read at than me to explain every single one in here but yeah you get the general idea then and yeah this is the standard trade offer object you can get this at this uh, URL this is just on the OP skins API documentation in here okay then so the second thing I want to show you about this module is uh, the events of the module so as you can see inside of the express trade uh, documentation then you can see that we have a lot of different events in here now offer accepted is the only one that I actually show off in the code in here as you can see here but shall just explain what it does then um, whenever an offer is accepted that we sent it's just going to return an offer object so I just went into the offer object then and then obviously we can play about with the offer object in here uh, it's got a lot of information in it so you know as you can see I work out the um, the name the steam ID the user ID the trade ID and then I work out what the value of the two sides was so we can feed back to the console a nice little summary of you know how much profit we made how much the various items were worth and yeah there's nothing really too much to explain about the offer accepted and other different events it just returns an offer object Okay then, so the third part of their module that I'm going to show you is, uh, this is going to be the get inventory endpoint. So we have get inventory endpoint and then we can get a user inventory. So they're slightly different. So we use et.iuser.getInventory and this will get the bot inventory, you know, kind of bot, uh, the account that we put in the secret for and the API key for. It's going to get the inventory of that. So as you can see, if I can just demonstrate in here what I did with the site code, I got the inventory. Then inside of here then, we uh, have an array for the inventory. Then for each um, item then in the inventory, we check if it's banned. Uh, well, I'll go into more detail with this in the, uh, in the tutorial for the next video for setting up the website. But yeah, we check if it's banned. Uh, we check, uh, sorry. Yeah, then we get the price for it. And then we can push uh, into this inventory then. We can push it nicely formatted because as you can see in here, the um, the item object is very, very large, and we don't need to be holding all this information. All that we need is, you know, the name, the ID, the category, the color, image, and price. That's all that we need. So we just extract the data uh, that we get from the call, and then we're good to go with that. Okay, then, guys. So the fourth and final thing that I'm going to show you about this module is going to be the get user inventory from Steam ID. So the only difference between this and the other mod, the other one that I just showed you, the other function there, is going to be you pass in an object here specifying the Steam ID, and from that point on, it's exactly the same as what I did before. Uh, and in this example site, then we can just check the price. Um, we can then, yeah, yeah sorry. We get the correct price based on the rate that we want. We check if it's banned. And then finally, we format it nicely again. And then we call back then to the function that called it since this is a module itself then. Okay then, so that's pretty much like all I really need to explain about the video. Uh, it seems very, very short and very, very lacked in information, which is why I chose to make the, make the whole site, make this site, uh, you know, make a tutorial for the site because I really, really feel like I'm not really doing the work here for the 3000, but yeah, uh, I hope that this could be of some help to anyone that's just looking to get uh, this Express Trade API up and running. Uh, you know, obviously I didn't go into too much, you know, like when we get the socket event, then we do this. Um, you need to check for this and all this sort of thing. But in the next tutorial that I'm gonna do, this is just like a shortened version because there's nothing really much else to say. I could have either made it this long or made it an hour long. You know, I could keep talking about it, but I've basically just showed you off the basic functions. And yes, yeah, stay tuned for the setup guide for the website, and I'll see you then.